What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to give you an update on the Red Sea Reef of Peninsula 500 and tell you about some of the problems I've discovered with my MP40. Now, if you're new to the channel, I put out a video every Friday at 4 p.m. UK time with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So if that's your goal, have a think about subscribing. Right, let's get to the tank. Now it's been a couple of months since I updated you with the progress of the Red Sea Reef of Peninsula 500. So I'm gonna bring you up to speed with how the corals are getting on, tell you about some of the problems I've had, and of course tell you what happened with those rusty power heads. And at the end, I'll tell you about my dosing and what I keep my parameters at. This tank is now 15 months old and starting to look less like a frag tank and more like a living reef. I've added another fish recently, more on that later. So I'm now up to 26, which is more or less capacity, although I still want to add two or three more, including a jawfish for extra character. As far as I'm concerned, as long as your filtration can cope, you have enough space and you have minimal aggression, you can never have too many fish. So before I get onto the problems, I'll start with the good stuff, SPS corals. I now have no wild caught colonies in the tank and more or less everything you see started life as a single branch one inch frag. As is the way with SPS, they've had a long bedding in period and they're starting to grow a little more quickly now. They've all based out now and are branching out nicely. It takes a lot of patience to watch small frags grow, but 15 months on, it's starting to feel really quite rewarding. And I've even used the time to teach my hawkfish to do disappearing tricks. I've also been patient with the corals I've bought. With previous tanks, I've bought corals just for the sake of it, and have tried to fill up space as quickly as possible. But this is my shot at a proper showcase tank, so I've prioritised quality over quantity, and being really picky with the corals I've bought has led to me getting some absolutely banging aquapora. I buy a lot of my corals from a few select local fish shops, but I find a lot of my best pieces come from other hobbyists. And I've really enjoyed doing things that way. You get to see some great tanks and chat to a fellow reefer about what has and hasn't worked for them. The new fish then is this little purple tang. I've wanted a tang for a while, and to my eye these guys are about the prettiest tang in the hobby. But I've also sadly lost a fish since my last update, my Solon Ras. Ever since I got the Harlequin Tusk fish, the Solon has been in hiding. Every time he came out, the Tusk viciously chased him back into his cave. I'd been trying to decide if I wanted to remove one of them, but sadly I came downstairs one morning to find the Solon Rast dead and stuck to my power head. I'd had him since my last tank, so about 18 months in total, so it was really sad to see him go that way. And while we're talking about power heads, I'll tell you about my rusty MP40. In the first six months of setting up this tank, I had major problems with my SPS and lost a number of corals. About nine months ago now, my MP40 wet side kept falling off, so I took it out and bought a replacement. Fast forward to a month ago, and I worked out how to take Vortec pumps apart. So I found the old wet side and broke it down, only to find the magnet had burst through the plastic. Now, when I was having problems with my SPS all that time ago, I assumed it was new tank syndrome, but now I know it was because I had metals in the tank. So I've learned the lesson that you should check your pumps from time to time to make sure they're okay. Ecotech actually replaced the damaged wet side for no charge, which is pretty impressive given it's three years old and well out of warranty. But while my SPS are generally looking very good at the moment, I have had problems with my Gold Rush Monty losing colour again. Last time that happened, I moved it to a lower light spot and it recovered, so I've done the same again, and now it's moved from its usual home to just about the lowest light part of the tank. And assuming it recovers, I'll keep it in a nice low light spot from now on. And while stony corals are the main attraction with this tank, my Zoa Garden has really grown out nicely. Zoas are another example of choosing corals carefully in this tank. I've made a conscious effort to get different colours, polyp sizes and heights, and I'm really pleased with the result. And let's not forget the Zoacock on the other side of the tank, which is absolutely covered now. I remove and sell 50 or so heads every couple of months, and they grow back in no time. They're Arc Woodstock Rainbow Zoas, and my clownfish are still using them as a home. From time to time the clowns bury themselves deep into the polyps, but they spend 90% of their day gently swimming around the zoas. Now I'm not prepared to put an anemone in my tank, so this is a nice little substitute for me. I've also been playing around with my lighting recently, my kessels are now a little bluer throughout the day, and I've increased the amount of time there on full blue in the evenings, which gives me this beautiful fluorescent scene every evening for about 2 or 3 hours. I recently sold my Radeon XR15 as I didn't really ever like the colour it gave. And for my money, Kessels give the most appealing colours of all LEDs. 
Ultimately, any LED will grow corals, so for me the deciding factor is the visual appeal. Kessel don't seem to sell very well in the UK, and I've never really understood why. I'm guessing it's because they're expensive, but I'd really like to see more of these knocking around. So finally then, as promised, I'll now tell you what my parameters are. My nitrates are around 5 parts per million and phosphates around 0.04. Although both have crept up a little recently, so I'll need to keep an eye on that. My alkalinity is fairly steady at 9 dKH and I monitor that every week. As to other parameters though, I couldn't tell you. I've just sent off an ICP test, but I don't really test much else myself. I've worked on the basis that as long as my alkaline salinity is stable, my calcium is probably about right, which is just about a safe assumption with ATI Essentials, but in all honesty, that's a bit too much of a blase attitude, and I plan on setting myself a regular weekly testing regime when I test everything all at the same time, every week without fail. Apart from ATI Essentials, I also dose 2 millilitres of iodine a day. No other trace elements for now, apart from a 10% weekly water change using Red Sea Blue Bucket. And I keep my nutrients up and my fish fat by feeding 4 lots of pellet food and 2 cubes of frozen a day. And now I have a tang, I also add a small amount of nori once a week. I've still got plenty of real estate to fill with corals and a little more space for some wow factor fish. So I'll update you again when I've got some more shiny twigs to tell you about. Now as to what might have caused the MP40 to break, there's an article on Reef to Reef that says you shouldn't wash the pumps in vinegar. Now I've had that pump for over three years so I can't remember if I've washed it in vinegar at some point, but I might well have done. From here on I'll certainly be using citric acid or muriatic acid. If you enjoyed that then give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next Friday's video and until next time, happy reefing.